I feel like we haven't had a sit down video in a minute so I wanted to kind of talk to you guys and just like update you guys on something that I had no idea about and literally it happened to me so if it can help anybody or if it can like just I don't know bring peace to anybody who needs it I feel like I would be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't share the story I want to share the story about when I gave birth to my son, SJ. And I've shared that story before. It was a magical time. I absolutely loved it. I also think that back when I gave birth, there was so much going on, you guys. There was so much going on. First of all, you're giving birth. It was my first time giving birth. It's such a crazy experience. You have all these cords attached to you. There's all these people telling you what to do and there's all these people giving you information. And then on top of that, I got induced. So typically when you get induced, the process tends to be a little bit longer because I basically went from being like one centimeter to 10. And I think typically when you go into like labor naturally, you probably get to labor at home, do your exercises, go in the tub. Like you just get to have a better time at home from what I'm assuming because I just went into the hospital. They started giving me medication and next thing I knew, 24 hours later, I gave birth. That's not what I wanted to share today. Uh, I actually wanted to share with you guys my experience with preeclampsia. Okay, so I, first of all, had zero idea that I was a preeclamptic patient up until like two weeks ago, one week ago. So recently I saw TikTok that there's girls who are asking for their birth records. So basically you can ask your doctor or your hospital wherever you gave birth for the for the records of when you gave birth and you'll get like a detailed note you'll get detailed notes of everything that happened basically from when you enter up until the moment you gave birth the medication they gave you all the notes the doctors left everything 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 now i didn't want to do all that because i thought that was a lot but what i did do is i have an app on my phone and i decided to go through my app and scroll all the way back to when i gave birth to just kind of go over what i had been through when i tell you my shock and dismay when I found out that I had preeclampsia and I hadn't shared this with you guys because I had no idea. Now, let me just kind of backtrack a little bit. When I gave birth to SJ, I remember, well, I don't even know where to start, but okay, I'll tell you guys this. I have always been a very healthy individual. Like I've always had really healthy blood pressure, blood sugar, like my oxygen has always been 100%. Like I have always just been a very healthy individual. When I was pregnant with my first baby, I still was a very healthy individual and I never had any red flags that would let the doctors assume that this was nothing but a healthy pregnancy. And basically I remember when I got checked into the hospital, they checked my blood pressure and I was fine. Now, as labor continued to progress, I remember you guys before I like I gave birth I wanted to have the most natural experience as possible like yes I wanted to have an epidural that was always my plan but I didn't want to be given any extra medication other than the epidural I got induced so as soon as I came in they gave me cytotech they gave me the Foley balloon they gave me uh, Pitocin they gave me the epidural the epidural didn't work so they gave me another epidural like I just felt like I was getting medication pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed onto me now when you're in the hospital giving birth you're typically monitor for baby's heartbeat you're monitor for your blood pressure um, baby's oxygen like you're just monitor for a bunch of things i remember throughout the process of the 24 hours when i was giving birth at some point one of the doctors nurses somebody came in i don't even remember who and they were like hey just so you know your blood pressure is whatever over whatever it was high and we need to give you magnesium now <sighs> this is why it's so hard and i wish we lived in a system and in a society where you can just trust anything that the doctors tell you because i was so on the defense about taking anything extra that i needed because i didn't want to be given any extra medication like i feel like you hear so many horror stories on tiktok and like social media about women who basically get pushed around to doing things that are unnecessary to them just because the doctors want to hurry up and get your birth done or just because x y and z right so i was already on the defense and i remember i denied the magnesium now magnesium is a medication they give you to lower your blood pressure i think i remember i told the nurse or whoever first came up to me and i was like no i don't want it like i don't want to take it like i'm fine because at the time I was really swollen, but I thought it was normal swelling from pregnancy. And the cuff that they used on me, I was like, I just need a bigger cuff. If you guys give me a bigger cuff, 
my blood pressure is gonna be fine. They ended up bringing a bigger cuff. My blood pressure went down a little bit. So I was like, see, I'm fine, okay? Now, I remember at the time I thought to myself, like, I'm fine, everything's okay. Tosta el control, está bien, está bien, está bien. Okay, well, tell me why the doctor came in. I remember it was like late at night. Era como la madrugada. The doctor came in, she woke me up, and I just hate the fact that she was rude about it because I think if she would have had a different approach, I maybe would have listened. And I know their job is not to be nice and to baby us, but I think that sometimes doctors forget that it's our first experience giving birth. And it's like one of the most life-changing moments that you will ever experience as a woman. And because they see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of women giving birth time and time again, like I was probably one of like 50 in the hospital, they just treat you like another number. So I remember she came in and she was like, is it true that you don't want to take the magnesium? And I was like, first of all, you're waking me up from my sleep. So hello. And she's like, I'm doctor, blah, blah, blah. I'm on a call and you need to take the magnesium. And I was like, I just don't feel comfortable taking it because I'm fine. And she's like, your blood results are, or your test results are coming back. And at this point, it's negligent if you don't take it. And I remember telling her, like, I feel fine. I'm fine. And I remember she made me feel so dumb because she said, well, sometimes you could have, you can have the flu and not have any symptoms. And it doesn't mean you're not sick. You should still take the medication and i remember thinking like she was like mad and now looking back i feel bad because she was probably just trying to save my life but to her it, it must have seemed so silly for me to not want to take this medication that was going to help my body but at the time i feel like i just had so much going on and there was so many things being done to me and there was so many things that were out of my control that i wanted to have a little bit of my like control back i remember when i told her run the test again and if i need it then you know come back and give it to me she like stormed off she didn't even say bye she literally just stormed off i told the nurse that was taking care of me at the time i told her i was like if i really need it they'll give it to me right and she said yeah yeah like they'll give it to you if you really need it i have now learned so i know i have now learned that that's not true you have to give consent for everything at the doctors so even if you're dying if you say you don't want a certain medication, they cannot force it upon you. The only way they can force something upon you is if you show up and you're unconscious and there's nobody there to make decisions for you or the other way that they can like do something to you even without your consent is if the baby is showing signs that they're in distress and they need to get the baby out or they need to do something to the baby so everything is consensual so now i have now learned that that nurse didn't give me the right information and i literally could have been even closer to like my body shutting down and if i said no to the medication it would have been no you guys know i'm here now it's been over a year i have my healthy baby boy so he's here i'm here we're both here and we're healthy right now the reason why i'm sharing this is because i recently went to the doctor and they asked me to get my labs done and they wanted to test the protein in my urine i remember i asked them i was like why do you guys want to test protein in my urine like this is so weird like, basically they told me when you were giving birth the first time with your baby your the protein in your urine was really high so we just need to get a baseline of where you're at right now so that we can compare sure okay i did it you guys when i tell you okay so when to be considered a preeclamptic patient like in order to be considered as preeclampsia you have to have high blood pressure and the protein in your urine has to be above a 0.2 okay a 0.2 when i gave birth i was in shock and dismay when i looked at the test results right now like not at the time when i was giving birth because there was so much going on but i looked at my test results from back then and the protein in my urine was a 7.2. Are we, like I just, let's take a second. In order to be considered preeclamptic, you have to have above a 0.2 of protein in your urine. I had a 7.2 girl, 7.2. I should have taken the magnesium, but I didn't know any better. I talked to my doctor and I, I, I was in shock when I, actually understood what was going on and this was recently not when i gave birth i was in shock because i was like oh my god like i was really sick and she's like yeah you were to the point where your kidneys were shutting down and basically your body was on its way of shutting down and when i received those news because obviously i didn't i i don't think i comprehended what was going on when i was giving birth 
because there was just so much going on. Like I really can't emphasize how overwhelmed I was when I was giving birth. Like there was just so much going on. I just can't, I just can't even put it into words how like out of it I was. So when I was talking to my doctor this last time and I was like, oh my God, I was like almost dying. And she was like, yeah, like it was really bad. <laughs> and I was like, like I laugh because I don't know how to like process it, but I was just in shock. I say all this to say, I think preeclampsia, it's a very scary disease. And basically it happens in pregnant women when the way that the doctor explained it to me is when the placenta and your body aren't kind of connecting the right way. And so I don't even know, like, I don't even know what it is. Like, honestly, like I Google it and it just, it's so scary. Like I know that there's moms who haven't made it out of delivery because of preeclampsia. And that is the scariest thing. That is the scariest thing. Because I remember when I was first going to give birth to, to SJ, my first baby, I was of the mentality of like, I want to be in control. I want to know what's happening to my body. I, and of course, like all those things you should be in control and you should know what's happening to your body. I just, I was so scared of doctors overstepping their authority that I can't believe I declined a medication that my body needed at the time. And it was because I was scared of them doing something to me that wasn't necessary, even though that was very much necessary. I don't know what would have needed to happen or what test result they they could have shown me for me to change my mind. But I think this the tricky thing is that I felt fine. Like I felt 100% fine. And I don't know if it was the adrenaline rushing through my body while I was giving birth that I was like, I, I feel good, I feel good, I feel good. Like if I felt bad, I would accept the medication. But I think sometimes your body can kind of block out symptoms or it can block out, I don't know, what you're feeling to kind of focus on what you're going through. Like for me at the time, it was giving birth. But it's just scary to, to think that things could have gone a lot differently. And I had no idea. Like I genuinely, I lived a whole year after giving birth without knowing that I was a preeclampsia patient. If you've been preeclamptic in the past, your chances of being of having preeclampsia for your next pregnancies are, are, are there. Like you are considered a high risk patient if you've had preeclampsia before. There's no way of knowing if you'll be a preeclamptic patient until you're pregnant and basically that's the reason why you have to go to your prenatal appointments once a month to make sure that they're tracking your blood pressure because the minute you start getting high blood pressure results they are literally going to basically hold you there until you give birth because you're considered a high-risk patient so preeclampsia can start developing as early as 20 weeks which cancelar el nombre de Jesús for all of us, for you guys and for myself. The sooner you start having preeclampsia, the sooner the labor and delivery team is going to try to deliver your baby. So preeclamptic baby or preeclampsia patients are sometimes suggested to deliver their baby as early as 34 weeks, which cancelar el nombre de Jesús. I don't wish that for either of us because that is such a small, tiny little baby. And those babies need to stay in the belly. But sometimes, I guess, they have to worry about the health of the mom. Um, and I, once the baby's 34 weeks, they will be welcome as a NICU baby. And they'll take care of them and the NICU so that the mom can be okay. Having preeclampsia does mean that you will more than likely deliver before the 40 weeks. But there are things you can do to basically help yourself not have preeclampsia one of those things being is if you've had preeclampsia before um, your doctor will probably suggest taking aspirin starting at 12 weeks because that reduces your chances of preeclampsia up in, up to like 30 percent i believe preeclampsia is just so scary and i have always been a healthy individual so i never thought it would happen to me I never thought it would happen to me. I never thought I would be a woman who had it, especially because I'm telling you, like I've always thought to myself of being like super fit, super healthy. I eat healthy. I don't even eat out a lot. Like, I don't know. Like, I kind of feel like my body, I don't know. Like, I don't want to say my body betrayed me, but perhaps it can happen to anyone. It's not your fault. Unfortunately, if you don't know that you have, you're like at risk for preeclampsia, you, like there's nothing you can do, like exercise, diet, like there's nothing like that that you can do that can help you prevent it. 
But um, I will say, if you're currently pregnant, do not miss any of your prenatal appointments. Get prenatal care because your life is just as important as the baby's and preeclampsia is so scary. I literally, literally felt zero symptoms and I was to the point where my kidneys were failing. I'm in shock. I'm in shock, you guys. Go to your prenatal appointments, please. Listen to your doctor. And it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to not trust the doctors 100%. But I think when they tell you that you absolutely need something, déjalo todo en las manos de Dios because at the end of the day, God is in control of everything. You know, God is truly in control of everything and he's the one that's going to guide you through your pregnancy, through your delivery, through everything. And I think in the future, I will be of the mindset instead of I have to watch my back from the nurses and from the doctors, I will probably more, be more of the mindset of I just trust that God is going to put the right people in my delivery room and I trust that God is going to be there present and he's going to work through the doctors and the nurses that are there to help me bring my baby into the world. I hope this video is helpful to at least even one person. Please do not miss any of your prenatal appointments. Take the medication that the doctors tell you to take because girl, por ser tan mula, literal, por ser tan terca, I, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse for me, but I am here to share my story and I'm here to be a cautionary tale for other people. You, I, we all, I know that we always want the baby to be okay, but we also want the mom to be okay. Um, so that's gonna be it for me. If you guys had experience with preeclampsia, also let me know in the comments because girl, I had no idea. I had no idea, zero idea, but uh, I'm here for you guys. I will be reading you guys in the comments. Let me know, uh, just let me know how your experience was with it. I hope that none of you are able to relate ever. And if you're currently pregnant, the only thing I can tell you is go to your prenatal appointments, especially at the end. Do not miss your prenatal appointments, okay? So that's gonna be it for me, you guys. Las quiero mucho, mucho, mucho. Que Dios me las bendiga. Quiero mucho, respondes más. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.